uh, no, we have Brent McLean who is joining us uh, from uh, Credit Suisse, and and we will have a fireside chat together about like the let's say what's happening in Switzerland, what's happening in the fintech space there, the banking space, and and what's also about the open banking uh, little mindset in in Switzerland and uh, in banks like Credit Suisse, UBS, and others. So, hello, Brent. How are you? We 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 can't hear you, Brent. There is, a, I think, a, we were able to to hear you a few minutes ago. Uh, what can happen is that you know, in the backstage room, if you still have one of these uh, video conference things, uh, conferences open, that they may take over the microphone. So that can be one thing. The second option would be to just refresh the page. We we don't hear you. We still can't hear you. Maybe a refresh would would do the work. So waiting for a few seconds. Don't hesitate to answer the polls. You know, you have the chat, the polls, and the people, right? You can answer the, some polls we've drafted for you. We'll give back some the numbers. And you have the people also to be sure uh, that uh, uh, you can connect with anyone as long as they uh, grant you <laughs> and, they ac and they accept your request to, to chat with them on, on the platform, right? So waiting for Brent. or a few seconds. If you have or questions, uh, if you have uh, questions about uh, you know what's happening there uh, in Switzerland or what's, what do you have in mind about, uh, uh, let's say, maybe wealth management APIs, right? If you know some, please put them in, in the chat. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, Switzerland is a place where uh, new, some specific particular FinTech um, uh, use cases can be can be developed, right? And this is uh, what we'll talk with uh, with Brent. Brent, are you able to talk? Brent, are you able to speak? No, we we can't hear you anymore. Technology, it was working a few minutes ago. And now? Yeah. Uh, there we Perfect. go. Okay. Sorry about that, everyone. No. <laughs> that, that, happened. that happened. So, yeah, uh, again, like uh, some great speakers we've received in the in the past, uh, you have uh, no slides. So you are the slide deck, and we're really glad to have this, uh, right, discussion together as a fireside chat. Um, so, so yeah, so you wanted to share with us a little bit about what you see from, from Switzerland about, you know, uh, open banking and embedded banking. Yes, um, I do as, um, let's say Switzerland is a market driven approach. And so when I look across the border into the EU, it really is a bit different and a bit more dynamic considering the PSD2 regulations and what has taken place there. Um, the fact that there's pretty much a mandate with GDPR and the accounts and the payments processing is, is a bit more mandated uh, to allow clients to share and control their data um, is, an, is an interesting piece when you look in the Swiss environment where client data and securitization around that data is a key component in terms of banking relationships. Um, so from that context, uh, and looking across the border um, and, and learning what is being done there, it's also trying to understand with Switzerland being a market-based approach, market-driven approach, um, how we can move forward in, in that same mentality to, to do what our colleagues are doing uh, within the UK, Germany, et cetera, uh, and bring that live in the Swiss environment. And I think for, for me, uh, in my role with open banking at Credit Suisse, it's um, trying to take advantage of, of what's already been done and, and what I can learn from that context and what we can do um, to be a bit more competitive, uh, not only in the Swiss environment, but also abroad from a global context. So what actually did you learn from what you've seen uh, with PSD2? With uh, uh, Open Banking UK, uh, what are the, let's say the the things you don't want to reproduce and the thing you you think uh, which were good for uh, uh, for uh, for the Switzerland market, Swiss Swiss market? Well, I think the the first thing I, I learned was for those that approached PSD two purely from a regulatory point of view um, to do what was required, um, especially if they had legacy technology in the back end. Um, let's just say they handcuffed themselves in terms of future opportunities. Um, when you take the basic approach, like in the UK, with the open banking platform they have there to go beyond PSD2, that is pretty much the approach 
I would like to be able to envision for us to continue to grow what we're doing in the open banking space, um, not only to, let's say, meet the market demands, but how we set the stage in terms of future growth and empowering ourselves and our clients um, the opportunity to do more. So actually, uh, uh, yeah, I understand uh, that following the regulation, you know, sometimes people just follow the regulation, and that, but that's not the goal. This is why also just to share with you, we wanted to call this event Embedded Banking from Open Banking to Embedded Finance, because really the idea that being open is not the goal. The goal is to be integrated, embedded, you, to be, you know, in other people <laughs> applications, right? Not just to be open, right? So that's a yeah. uh, with you on this, but what were the good parts? What did you learn that actually will, will that things that needs to be maybe, uh, I don't want to say copied, but be inspired of? Well, I, I think the the way the vision and the view is beyond just the the basic PSD2 requirements. And the fact that you have FinTech firms who are doing a lot more and have a lot more product offerings for their clients. The fact that clients are in control of their data and who has access to that data. Um, and, and then as well, the, the view of aggregators um, in the marketplace, right? So you do have the likes of Tink, um, you have Bud, uh, a fintech firm there in the UK. Uh, you also have the likes of uh, Plaid moving over from the US into, into the EU in terms of trying to make a market position here as well. And I think that development kind of shows the emphasis in terms of open banking, open finance, or open data, whatever you want to call it, going forward because you do have a few players in the market that are trying to position themselves in the right way um, to not only integrate with banks and, and third party providers or fintechs, but have a, a better ability to not have to worry about across the EU, the different standards that might be in place because they were kind of according to the Berlin guidelines and not necessarily as strict in terms of protocols, et cetera, that have been developed in the UK. So, so I see yeah. that as a, as a great thing to develop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, maybe going more, uh, setting up a standard, at least a proposal for a standard uh, uh, design. So uh, today, what are the markets which are really market driven? Like there is the US, but there are, uh, yeah, mainly USA, but I know, that, for example, that Mexico and India and Australia and Japan and Canada is also trying to have a kind of regulation happening. All Europe has PSD2, Nigeria is having regulation. So. So it seems the regulation part, the regulation driven is taking over. Uh, why, why today you consider the market driven approach? Well, from a Swiss perspective, we don't have the, the let's say mandate or regulatory overview to have any requirements yet to have that in place. So Switzerland has always been a market driven approach. If you look at private banking, if you look at wealth management, um, not only on the retail banking space, um, the competitiveness here is more about banking relationships and not necessarily that the government gets involved in terms of that banking relationship. It's more about how to protect the clients, how to protect the banks, how to protect the country, and, and as well, um, ensuring that client data and, and the control around that client data is contained within the banking environment and ensuring that you're doing the right thing to protect the client data. And I think that's where the interesting thing is with under PSD2 is the client then actually gains that control over their data, right? Um, from a market-driven approach, it, it is about then how do you share data across the banks or with a fintech firm if you don't have a mandate. Um, you can pick and choose your partners like they do in the US. I think that's where Played and a few other bigger um, players in the market there have come into fruition with their banking relationships and how they could build upon that. And that's still to be seen here in Switzerland how the market moves in that direction. Um, here in Switzerland, we do have SIX, which is part of the Swiss Exchange Group. Um, they have B-Link as their um, API and ecosystem to support, uh, at the moment, mostly the corporate banking uh, development for API and connectivity. Um, but it doesn't mean that there aren't other initiatives that are being considered. So I'm also part of a working group, uh, uh, part of a few working groups within SFTI, Swiss FinTech Innovation. And we are actually have been working on a number of different um, API standards for the Swiss environment. So if you look at accounts or payments, um, we don't just consider the Swiss market for that context, but we're also looking at the EU and having SEPA payments or cross-border payments into the EU and how that can be aligned into one API rather than having a Swiss specific API and then an EU API behind that. Um, the same thing in terms of mortgages, uh, lending, um, even there's even been a few discussions around having a wealth API. So, so from market driven approach, uh, there are these discussions, we are setting the standards. 
I think the most momentum we've gained recently has been around the, the aspect of uh, multi-banking for private individuals, as at the moment the market is driven more by the corporate banking approach with EBIX and SWIFT contracts. So, so yeah, the, the wealth API, I want to integrate that one for sure. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people would be interested. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, PSD2 and, and Open Banking UK and other regulations have pushing a, a, an idea. It's not directly stated as is, but what I call API neutrality. It seems that as long as because as long as you are, uh, you know, a financial or institution or a bank in, in this case, as long as someone is registered, they have the right to access your account information or, you know, the payment initiation, you know, the, the payment, uh, you know, API, right? So mm -hmm. it's like net neutrality, but for APIs, uh, you cannot discriminate. You cannot decide who is using your APIs, you know, for the good of the customer, right? For the end user, right? Believing that we will have a, a, a fair and open and, and vibrant uh, startup or financial ecosystem, innovative ecosystem that will use these. So, so we constrain the infrastructure to be open and neutral, right? In the market-driven approach, right? Uh, in the market-driven approach, companies make decisions on their own, right? About what needs to be open to others or not. But we've seen that the market can sometimes organize itself quite, quite well. Uh, today, what's your vision about what's happening in Switzerland? Do you see the, because you are part of SFTI, but do you see uh, like companies are ready to collaborate for a sane ecosystem or do you see kind of uh, uh, already some competition happening? Well, uh, for the first point, that's a good question. I think for the first point, um, there are a variation of number of members of SFTI. So we're not just banks, it's also insurers. We also have a few um, even more uh, mortgage lending uh, or, or mortgage brokers, if you will, also in attendance to these discussions because they also feel the need and benefit of having an API available to them for, for pricing and contractual uh, offers for their clients. And they don't want to necessarily sit around and have paper or have something go back and forth electronically, but have an API where there's something consistent, something near real time in terms of a valid offering. And when you they're talking with the clients, it actually is pretty much done right then and there. Um, and that's part of the market-driven approach, right? So if you are looking at um, this need in the market and there are people participating in the market discussions in terms of their need to provide more for their clients and there's the ability for, for the banks to then make additional money off of that as well because it is time to market, it is a client offering, um, then, then that's how I think it should be done. Um, in terms of, you know, the next steps up, past that and what is the next competitive level. Um, there have been a few announcements from different banks already with, with relationships um, with different insurers to offer bank assurance products. Um, that has been something you didn't typically see happen in Switzerland in terms of the, the promotion of these type of offerings. And, and again, it is working in terms of the benefit to the client. And I think the client, although not necessarily at the forefront of uh, how they own the data, I think the relationship between banks and fintech firms and other players in the market actually enable us to then take advantage of what we can offer the client in a better and more meaningful way. Now, I agree with you. We often talk about banking, but uh, there is also the open insurance aspect. And I would just want to point to our uh, uh, listeners that a link I just put in the chat about the open insurance initiatives. It's Fred Husseini, who has been speaker at API Days who try to make like market-driven, uh, let's say, insurance APIs exactly in the same way. And actually there are some Switzerland, some Swiss companies, uh, Swiss uh, insurance companies already uh, part of, of, of the initiative. So, so yeah, I agree. I totally uh, uh, agree with you there. Um, there is also, um, you know, uh, Swiss, Switzerland has been quite known for their, its financial industry, uh, not only, uh, right? There are many other industries uh, there in Switzerland, uh, especially in, in making uh, tennis, great, te great tennis players. But, uh, <laughs> but on the other side, uh, yeah, it seems that uh, Switzerland is, a, is an island inside Europe. I think you said that earlier when we were discussing, right? Uh, it's uh, in so way, so the, the, um, uh, inside European Union, right? You know, uh, for, you know, not the geographical Europe, right? The, yes. The, you know, economical and political union, uh, right? Uh, yeah, but so uh, in an island, you say that you need to match probably with uh, some PSD2 requirements, but the market may go beyond. So what's today the discussion that are happening about the about Switzerland 
being more connected to be maybe bigger than its own walls on the digital banking space? Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the comparison to that is in the 1800s, mid 1800s, um, Switzerland was really being passed by by the railroad systems. And Alfred Escher, who was actually one of the initiators of the creation of Credit Suisse, um, he actually put in place at that time the push for having a Swiss railway system um, that could connect across Switzerland, being, you know, in the middle has mountains and such like that. And the Gotthard Tunnel was then created, therefore connecting the north and the south of Europe in a more meaningful way. And I think that in that same context, that same idea, Switzerland having this tunnel being done, designed and built and having a rail system put in place to actually connect to the rest of Europe actually helped it flourish to where you see it today. And I would expect that open banking and APIs or open data and APIs also then continue that journey more from a digital, not transformation that's overused, but digital connectivity point of view. So therefore clients in and out of Switzerland that have Swiss accounts or have, or, or residing in Switzerland about have an account in Germany or in the UK, et cetera, or Singapore, India, um, can then have that connectivity to their other banking accounts to have that uh, ability to have um, PFM on their mobile app from a global perspective in a global context and really have digital banking in their hands um, as a part of that. So it seems that uh, Switzerland is doing the, let's say the digital road and bridges for connectivity, right? Across North and South and East and West of Europe, right? Like I'm trying well, to be with some marketing here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think that's what um, what we get to learn from for for PSD2 and and going beyond PSD2 in the EU and and how we become more of a player in those markets. Right? Yeah, we have a question from Nick uh, on the chat. The return on investment of the investments on API ecosystem with the regular with the regulatory demand in parallel will be a positive factor for the future of the lean banking workflow or the new banking. Okay, so the return investment on API ecosystem with the regulatory demand in parallel will be a positive factor for the future of the lean banking workflow or the new banking. Just a, it's just a, a, a positive, uh, positive thing or it's completely new. Well, I, th I think once you do a more API-driven approach um, internally and then looking at externally, right? So if you're looking at regulatory mandates and regulatory reporting, et cetera, um, if you have your own data in order, um, then that becomes part of what you're actually delivering and working on. Um, every bank or, or financial institution, insurer, et cetera, has an ecosystem that they have in place. And if you're looking at the structure around that for, for APIs and then open APIs, um, they should complement each other. And, and therefore, that is really the optimization you're looking for for the future anyway. Yeah, I, I often say that, you know, banks and insurers have been designed to be not open. That was actually their value, right? To be secure and, and, and you know, for the, the money to, to stay here uh, or the data to stay here. But now we need to have this open, you know, banking, what I call open, embedded banking, right? Uh, but we agree on the term open, uh, what it means. Uh, so, yeah, and it seems that Switzerland has, you know, is, it has some private uh, banking wealth uh, management. All right. So, do you see the the customers of the end of the of these banks ready to understand and hear the word open? Uh, you know, in SFTI, you have the Open Wealth uh, discussion group, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, Open Wealth, right? Do customers are ready to hear that? Well, I th I think for them, if they can consolidate all their portfolios in one place and have that overview, then yes. But if they if if they then consider that they're information somehow would be open to others, then no, right? And that's the whole basis of, of banking anyway, is ensuring that even if the client is in char control of their, their data, um, the partners that we have, are they the right partners for our client? How you do the due diligence? Where are the risks that you have to kind of consider on behalf of your client? Um, especially because in Switzerland, there's no centralized um, entity to kind of look at how TPPs or third-party providers act or are licensed in Switzerland. Uh, the it's really the onus on on the banks and the insurers and and even the fintech firms that offer different relationships and what they might have for third-party provider uh, interaction. Um, that everything is secure and everything it has been done in the right light to reduce the risk for the client. Yeah, no, uh, totally makes sense. And why I say that is because. 
in the executive uh, uh, consulting, consulting I, I give to about, uh, let's say, APIs and banking and, and other uh, related topics, it's true that the term open has been uh, like uh, quite controversial into board and executive meetings because people were feeling that being open is like being bleeding, right? It was, they were calling bleeding edge technologies, right? And so, uh, so yes, yeah, so the, the term was mostly, all the managers were putting kind of breaks on the term open, you know, we don't want to be open, right? We will lose business. But when sometimes uh, I push the term embedded, right? You know, being integrated, embedded, like con conquer new markets, right? Uh, they they understood that APIs was really for the positive part of the of the of the PNL more than the, just the, uh, 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 like just just losing value right to others. Uh, so yeah, so this is what I was asking the question for to you about open well, wallet. And, and that's where uh, I would think then if you look at banking as a service, right, and your and the connectivity that you offer, um, and especially if you then taking the approach of APIs, it's then having the right partnerships, it's then having the right relationships, and and then as well, um, even for your offerings that you have as a bank, um, getting those partnerships where others are then using your products as well. So when you're opening up the environment, some of it is, you know, are we losing the contact with the client? Well, depending on what you're offering yourself and the, and the, the, the client experience around that versus a, another third party, well, that's a, dif a differentiator, right? Because your information, whether it's through a third party platform or within your own online mobile app, um, it depends on the nature and the competitiveness of that. But if you actually are opening up your environment to offer your products to a broker or to somebody else, um, and even to your clients, so they actually have it in their own systems, if they're IT mature, then they can actually do more for themselves and you still get the benefit. And, and that's where, if I see it being open, that's what you're really opening to. You're opening into a new market structure and not necessarily just based on the fact of you're giving everything away and you're gonna lose the client. In some cases, you can actually retain the client or have more wallet share of the client because you're giving them an ease of use of their own software or ERP systems rather than actually have them worry about this fintech firm that might do something a bit weird or crazy and they're insecure. I'm not saying that yeah. fintechs do that. I've worked for a few fintech firms, so it's okay. No, it's okay. You know, it's, it's about exchanging value as long as the exchange is fair about what people take and people add. That's the reciprocity we all want in business. And it should be the same for, for, for APIs, right? Is there, we yes. have one minute left. Is there any uh, last idea that you want to share with us? Um, <laughs> Well, I'm looking forward to the round table I have tomorrow um, with uh, Paul Rowan from, from Apogee in terms of the next discussions in terms of APIs and open banking. Uh, so far today has been really good. I've learned a lot and I'm looking to share a bit more tomorrow as well during that round table. So thank you. Where, where can we know more about what, you know, what's happening in Switzerland? You told me there is a white paper being prepared. Uh, you know, if, if people are from Switzerland or they know people and they want to connect better with the Swiss ecosystem or, or, and, and Credit Suisse also, uh, and you, how, how they can do it? Um, well, they can go to Swiss FinTech Innovation um, website and they can see actually all the API standards that have already been created and shared there. There's a link then to also to GitHub in terms of what we have, uh, in terms of the market standards we've outlined. Um, from a from a banking perspective, um, each bank is still working on its own, let's say, marketplace or developer portal. Um, so it's not necessarily as competitive as the EU, as we're still maturing in that area. But I would say um, SFTI would be one place to look. Um, look at six and the B Link um, component there to learn a bit more about what has already been, what is already a current offering in, in the Swiss environment, and uh, that then, you know. As things develop, you know, there'll also be different notifications coming out as well, even from the banks in, in terms of their offerings. Yeah, thank you very much. And just to comment on your uh, on what you said, uh, you said it's not there yet as competitive, but you know, it's. I think open banking is not where the first mover will win, but the first settler. So uh, yeah, let's uh, yeah let's see who will really settle and understand the you know the how to make value in this ecosystem. Thank you very much, Brent. Uh, again, you can watch Brent uh, Roundtable tomorrow. At TP is London, uh, uh, you know, uh, by connecting to the platform again. Thank you, Brent. See you tomorrow. Right. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you all.